ok we're now back in session we will continue with the public comment Hi, I'm Cindy Weber um, from Sturgeon Bay. I'm the CEO at Sunshine House. Um, I'm going to probably jump around a little bit based on the different presentations today and the different comments and that kind of stuff, some of the um, things that I want to go ahead and um, provide perspective on. Um, first of all, Sunshine House is committed to the quality of life for seniors and disabled individuals throughout all of Door County. Uh, we're also committed to continued transportation. Um, to give a little bit of background on some of the things that Joe had talked about previously, in the past when we were receiving 5311 funds, those funds were coming to us because we were losing substantial amounts of money. So the money that came to us from the county basically covered 60% of our loss, but the challenge is we still had 40% of our loss that we were having to fund operationally through other parts of our organization. So part of when the county switched to um, family care, um, and that was at the same time that I became the CEO at Sunshine House, one thing that we did is we went back in and negotiated with the managed care organizations to charge what our actual cost for a trip was so we were not having a loss. And so that's part of the reason why, and there's been some other things that have added to those dynamics that um, have changed the financial situation. Um, and how it pertains to how the county funding is set up. Um, currently, a lot of our funding for transportation comes through family care, through the managed care organizations, IRIS. Um, we do also provide some transportation through DVR. Um, what we see is, I know the gentleman earlier talked about uh, price, speed, and quality, um, and how it's hard to provide all three. A lot of times we are privately contracted with whether it's DVR and the MCO to provide a single trip because one of the big challenges with door-to-door -door is that timeliness issue. Uh, and, you know, we've, how many times do we sit in our front lobby and we have a client who's, you know, their goal is to provide a great, to be a great employee for their employer, and they're sitting there and they're freaking out because their ride's 20 minutes late and they were supposed to be at work. Uh, so we have started providing more of those one-on-one -on -one transportation rides because, and quite frankly, we have to charge the full cost of the ride because, we don't have any other any other funding sources. So we are definitely a more expensive option for transportation. That's why uh, for someone to provide a private ride through us would cost a lot more, and that's the benefit of having door-to-door. -door. And we are full supporters of door-to-door -door as a service provider in our county. I would say on an average day, we probably have anywhere from six to eight times a day that door-to-door -door or awesome cab or one of the other transportation systems, our services are showing up at our door. Um, providing a lot of those supplemental rides. Um, to give some perspective, transportation is about 10% of our budget. Uh, this past year it was right around $225,000. So it's, it's an important part of our budget, but it's not a huge part of our budget, um, but extremely, extremely vital. Um, going back to that funding source, like I said, we do not receive 8521 monies. Um, the last three couple of years, in 2015, we did receive 32,000 of money from 5311. Um, that means that we lost another 40%. In 2016, we received 28,000. 2017, 50,000. And last year, we only received $884 in money through 5311 because we had been able to cover the expenses of our program. Um, unfortunately, though, we're still doing a lot of paperwork for it because, quite frankly, it is giving the county a lot of benefit for us to remain in 5311 through this year and next year. Um, a couple of different things about our transportation system. We will, we do plan on staying in the transportation business going to in the future. Um, part of the reason is door-to-door -door can't handle the volume of riders that we, we handle. So currently, um, our average ridership for the past four years has been 18,000 rides a year. That's a lot of rides, especially when you're transporting one or two. That's where we have the buses and we can do that larger volume transportation. Um, our cost per passenger right now is $11.69 as an average ride. So you can see if we were charging what a public transportation system does of $1.75 or $3.50, we'd never be able to make it work. Um, We are also looking at additional funding sources, whether or not that's through grant opportunities to provide transportation to more outlying areas. 
Um, <coughs> we would be interested in further utilization of our vehicles if there is a place for us to uh, partner with the county and somehow and do some internal city routes or some specific routes, especially at times that our vehicles are not being fully utilized. We're definitely open to those conversations. The, our, the current audit process, we are on a revenue and expense basis. Um, and when the auditors have been here, first of all, the state auditors have been like four to five years behind on auditing our system, which I think some <coughs> of the um, interpretations that I've done in the past would have come more clear if that audit um, system had happened sooner than what it has. Uh, we would be more than happy to <coughs> work with the county as far as if there's some opportunities for us to provide some more cost effective routes within any system if a system would be to continue. Overall, you know, I guess the big message is the fact that we are committed to transportation. Just so we also know that we, we are applying for, we did apply for 5310, which is another vehicle funding source. We have been awarded um, two buses and one van, um, but we need to pay for 20% of that vehicle cost out of our pocket. So we're looking at expenditure of quite around fifty to $60,000, depending on what changes we make, what alterations we make to those vehicles and vans. So we are committed to investing back into the program to be able to keep transportation as an affordable option in our community. So we are fully in support of door-to-door -door and we're more than happy as an organization to be supportive of any effort the county has in moving transportation forward. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, Good Christine morning. Anderson from Washington Island. I'm here today both on a personal and a pro professional level. First off, on a personal level, I was a caregiver for my mother from 2011 to 2012 who was residing here in Sturgeon Bay in Pinecrest and Dorchester and was wheelchair bound. She was unable to transfer to a private vehicle when she needed to be transported to medical appointments. The door-to-door -door service provided her with many comfortable rides to her appointments. As her caregiver, I rode along with her and was very impressed with such a great service, especially for those who are disabled or wheelchair bound. The drivers were always friendly and helpful with getting her in and out of the van safely. Cost was affordable, vans were clean, and for the most part they were on time when they said they'd be there. I know there are many people out there who would benefit from this service, primarily the elderly and disabled. I would hate to see us lose this valuable service. Speaking on a professional level, I'm the Executive Director of the Washington Island Community Health Program, whose main mission is to keep seniors in their island homes safely and independently via service programs and community support. I've been in this position since 2011 and on the Dortran Board of Directors since 2014. Transportation is often a barrier for older adults and disabled residents in our Door County community. The door-to-door -door service provides thousands of rides to folks in Sturgeon Bay, getting them to and from appointments, work, church, social events to keep them engaged in the community. The trans this transportation service is their lifeline to get them where they need to go and be productive members of our society. If the door-to-door -door service is lost, it will literally leave a few thousand folks stranded. In closing, I've seen the benefits of door-to-door, -door, both personally and professionally. This is a vital service to our community. <coughs> For the two to 3,000 folks who utilize this as their main means of transportation, I urge you to think of the Door County residents when making your decision, and I strongly encourage the board to consider keeping this valuable service and work on finding a funding solution. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Lauren Doust. I live at 1818 Kentucky Street in Sturgeon Bay, and I work as a social worker at Door County Medical Center. Door to Door has provided 1,164 rides for our patients at Door County Medical Center in the past three months. On the whole, Door to Door is a dependable and affordable service. It has been a vital resource for those in our community who cope with chronic physical and mental illness, disabilities, and other ailments that make daily living a struggle. It is the most affordable form of transportation for the many in our community who live on a limited or fixed income. P patients come to our hospital in door-to-door -door vans for scheduled appointments. They also use door-to-door -door vans to get home from the emergency room or when they are discharged from the hospital. They take door-to-door -to, -door to rehab appointments at the Cherry Point Mall. For those who are disabled, door-to-door -door is the most affordable and dependable wheelchair taxi service. The ADRC bus and the Sunshine House bus also have wheelchair capability and are great options, but unfortunately are not always available for our patients because of their scheduled daily routes. We see people on a daily basis, often several times a day, who need wheelchair transport back to their home. At Door County Medical Center, 
We keep a ministry fund available for anyone in our community who is in a time of crisis and has an urgent need to pay for things like housing, utilities, medications, or transportation. Before we disperse any funds, we meet with the individual to ensure that they've utilized any other resource that may be available to them. Often, we are able to help them find resources they weren't aware of. For example, individuals who are enrolled in Medicaid or the Family Care Program have transportation services available as a part of their Medicaid benefit. We are often able to help get them transportation through Medicaid. But often, but approval for these rides requires at least a 24-hour notice, which is sometimes not an option. When they have no other option, our ministry fund helps with their transportation, oftentimes by giving a patient a voucher for door-to-door. -door. Last year, the ministry fund gave over $6,000 worth of rides for people in our community. The majority of this cost being for people who required wheelchair transport when door-to-door -door was not available. A wheelchair taxi ride from Door County Medical Center to Anna's house costs around $80. We rely on private taxis when we have a patient who needs additional help to get into their home and when door-to-door -door isn't available. But as you can imagine, with 7.7% of people in Door County and 10.6% in Sturgeon Bay living below the poverty line, many people just simply don't have the money to pay for a cab. As you are having to face these terrible cost-cutting decisions, so have we. Last year, we lost a generous donor to the ministry fund, which caused our fund to run out of money. We had to make some difficult decisions about how to prioritize the limited funds we had available. We kept transportation a priority because without transportation, people cannot get to work, medical appointments, or stay connected with friends and family. This leads to lost jobs, poor health outcomes, and increased stress and isolation. We've invested resources into finding ways to sustain the ministry fund to ensure that we can continue to help people get, get where they need to go in their time of need. We've partnered with DoorTran and are exploring alternative fundraising and grant opportunities. Moving forward, I urge the board to prioritize the need for public transportation and to keep the door open to finding alternative ways to fund the program. We are a diverse community with diverse needs. Door-to-door -door is the closest thing we have to a public transit system and people have come to rely on it. Given the fact that the hospital and Walmart are two of the most frequent, frequented stops for door-to-door, -door, perhaps some sort of bus system would be a more efficient option for some. But I implore you to remember those who are disabled, who cannot take a bus or an Uber, whose physical, emotional, and financial well-being will be greatly impacted if they do not have access to affordable and dependable transportation. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Going once, going twice. Thank you everyone who showed up and participated. Okay, back up to the agenda. Resolution 2019-23, Proclamation Travel and Tourism Week, May 5th through the 11th, 2019. I'll make a motion to approve that. Is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. <clears throat> oh, sorry. This is our, <clears throat> each year we do a... <laughs> Uh, proclamation for Tourism Week. It's provided to the Business Bureau, um, and again, it's we've done it each year at this time frame. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Right. In memoriam, 2019-24 for Tom Reynolds. Dan. Also moved. Second. Okay. Perennial or annual, anyway. To the Door County Board of Supervisors, whereas Tom Reynolds passed away on March 13, 2019, and whereas Supervisor Reynolds was duly elected to the Door County Board of Supervisors in April of 1990 and re-elected in April of 92, 
and whereas Supervisor Reynolds represented District 8 consisting of the City of Sturgeon Bay's Wards 3, 4, and 5, and whereas Supervisor Reynolds served on several committees including Airport and Parks, Data Processing, Land Information Technical Committee, Resource Planning, Social Services, and a representative on the Bay Lakes Regional Planning Commission. Whereas, in addition, Tom Reynolds was elected Door County District Attorney in 1974 and served two, two terms. Now, therefore, it be resolved that the Board of Supervisors Assembly in regular session this 26th day of March 2019 extend our sincere sympathy to the family of Tom Reynolds with his acknowledgement of his dedication to the citizens of the County of Door. Thank you, Dan. All in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Resolution 2019-25, purchase of single axle dump truck with snow equipment. John. I move for approval of resolution 2019-25. I'll second that. Once again, this is uh, something that's been approved. We have the money for it. It's in the budget, but our rules require that it's over $100,000. It has to be brought before the board. Okay. Any questions? If not, we will go to the voter board. In a moment. <laughs> We're ready. Not work either. <laughs> Too many buttons. Okay, uh oh, it's not working again. Oh. Now it's my turn. I don't have any more batteries. Here we go. That's <laughs> passing the vote of 20. Yes, and one absent. Thank you. Oh. No. Resolution 2019-26, double selling, written joint determination. Joel. Uh, make a motion to approve but defer because I was not at the meeting for I'll second information that. on it. Sir, I can give a, just a basic 101. So what this is is a requirement in terms of a resolution to have on file for how we operate the jail. Uh, and with the, well, at the time, Lieutenant Stern being rep, now our elected sheriff, we need to update that resolution with our new jail administrator. And really what it is, it's a resolution that, I guess, is supplied in terms of how we actually operate our jail and, I guess, do some of the staffing and how we use some of the jail cells themselves. But it's more procedural. We need to have it in terms of when we do the um, audit with the jail that we need to have this resolution. That's how it's explained at the, at the community level. Yes. Uh, I guess a question I have is, are they adding double bunking right now? I believe at the committee they said that was the design of the building to have that uh, B cell designed with double bunking in mind originally. Correct. Well, they right. haven't done it, I don't think. I understand that. I was on the on the committee yeah. and I knew the day would come when we would double bunk, but I, I was just looking for the justification. If we're doing it right now, why why are we doing it? Because we're short of. No, we're not no. doing it. No. We're not doing it now. We're not doing no. it. It's just a requirement of the state to have this in place. Correct. And I understand DOC says that you can do this, but it, it takes county board approval, uh, sheriff and county board approval to do it. And uh, uh, I, I guess the only thing, you know, I, when we were building the jail, they wanted to do a lot of double bunking to cut back, and, and uh, that it can be dangerous to do that. Anybody that's been in the law enforcement area, uh, knows that when you start double bunking, you can only do it with certain people. And, that, and then there's risk involved because people can get pretty desperate. And, and uh, so when the day comes, and the day probably will come, that they'll double bunk so that the, the jail can handle more people. Well, this, this is only for six pods. I mean, six beds, I think, or whatever. Six cells within a B5. Okay. Thank you. Roy? That, that was on the, uh, Supervisor Engelbert said six cells, and that's all we're talking about, six cells that are going to be double bunked. Hmm. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? 2019-27, <clears throat> appointments to committees, commissions, and boards. So 
So uh, again, it's a standard um, for terms that are expiring. It's included in the memo of the packet in terms of which ones we're doing. We're doing the Veterans Service Commission, Aging and Disability and Resource Center, and the Nutrition Advisory Council. We did add, a, I guess, an updated one from your packet because we had a, the name on the back for, for Winnie Jackson. It wasn't actually listed, but she is actually being appointed to the Nutrition Advisory Council, and the updated memo on your desk actually has that outlined. Need a motion? I'll make a motion to put uh, the memorandum with these people on here, and mm -hmm. I don't, really you know. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Linda. For the people that are that are leaving, other than Mr. Went, who passed away, um, is there a reason? Are they just retiring, or they're just resigning? They just feel like they don't have time to do this, or? Correct. What we do is when their terms up, we always ask first. Our first preference is always to ask if they're willing to continue, mm -hmm. and if that's the case, then we usually ask for that because we're always looking for people to serve. Um, but in a lot of mm -hmm. cases, they're either getting off, and then we ask for new individuals mm -hmm. to serve. Well, it says filling unexpired terms. That's why I question why they're leaving. Right. Again, when I don't have, I guess, individual reasons for each one, okay. but when they approach their, I guess, respective area, they've requested to step down. So I don't know if Joe has the specific background on him, but, right? One of the members got a new job mm -hmm. and couldn't attend the meetings anymore and asked to resign. Okay. So we found a replacement for that last year. Yep. So it's for legitimate reasons and not yes. just because <laughs> the committees aren't functioning properly oh, no, or no, something no, no, no. like no. that. Correct. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Oh. When Kenny went, did we send him a uh, thing thanking him for the service or his family? Or is that done automatically? Like when we have a supervisor pass on, we do a resolution, and I know we can't make a resolution for everybody that worked for us. But has someone uh, notified the family? In process. Huh? In it's going to go through the okay. Veterans Service Commission and hopefully next month. Okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? 2019-28 County Snowmobile Trail Aid for 2019-20 snow season. Damn. Oh, move to pass. Second. Um, this is a perennial thing that we apply for aid from the state to help us with the snowmobile maintenance throughout the year in Door County. Do um, you want to know anything else? We'll ask Ben. <laughs> is he still there? Yes. <laughs> Any questions? Any motion? Just check it. Okay. All right. There's no fiscal impact, so we won't go to the voter board. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Ordinances. Report. Amendments to shoreland and comprehensive zoning maps. Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion that we accept the report to the Door County Board of Supervisors. Uh, concerning amendments to the Door County Shoreland and Comprehensive Zoning <coughs> Maps for Gardner, Jackson, Fort, and Sevastopol. Second. If you need an explanation, I'd prefer Mariah to come up and explain it. Anybody like an she explanation? Probably, Please. She's here. She I, was. Yeah. I'd like a <coughs> Thank you. Hi, Mariah Good, Director of Land Use Services. Um, basically, both the Shoreland Ordinance and the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance regulate wetlands. The language matches between the two ordinances, and that language is dictated by state statute. Um, one thing that we've been doing, I think, for about the past 10 or 12 years that the state allows us to do is um, when we go out to a property, we can make an infield determination about where the wetland boundaries are rather than having to look, rely on the maps that the state gives us because the maps are obviously an estimation of where the boundaries are. We used to require the property owners to petition to change the maps um, to accurately reflect the conditions on the ground. But now we have the ability, because of our, how our ordinances are written, to make an infield determination about where the line is and then to go ahead and issue the permit as appropriate. Um, so this is what we just kind of refer to as a batch rezoning where we're cleaning up the map for whatever it is, I think 10 different properties in a couple of different towns where we determined that the line in the field was incorrect. Mm -hmm. And we don't bother doing this process if it's within, you know, probably depending on the size of the lot, 20 to 50 feet. But if the, the map is really wrong for a property, then we do take it through this process. I'm just Bob. curious, how, how do these parcels come to your attention? 
Is this there's some owner? sort of some sort of application that comes to us in the, um, the case you've got the chart in front of you. A couple of them were via a land division process, <coughs> subdividing property. They have to show where the approximate wetland boundaries are, um, and they can ask for field verification on that by us if they want, um, or if they're applying for like a regular zoning permit or a shoreland zoning permit. And when the zoning administrators go on site, then they verify whether the maps are correct or not. And this is um, county staff that are making these determinations? Correct. Not if a property owner doesn't agree with our determination, they can hire either a private wetland delineator or they can ask that DNR staff come out to their property, although that process is getting a little bit more cumbersome and the DNR won't actually like mark a line on the ground. It's just sort of a, a feel, I think. So. <clears throat> One more question. Do we utilize, um, since we have such great um, aerial photography, you know, our aerial um, imaging, do we utilize that as well as far as, I mean, generally water is sort of a level, you know, seeks a level and makes a level. And I've, there's been times when I know in some cases I've seen wetland maps where clearly it was done in the past from either either just uh, taking the old information or, or whatnot. And, and certainly since water basically is a level, are we looking at elevation contours since we can get down to a couple of feet of contour now that we use that too now or we're not actually allowed to create our own base maps the state does that but they do create those maps using lidar photography aerial photography okay. soils maps um, any delineations that we've done so when we have things like this that go through our processes in some cases depending on the type of um, delineation that's been done on the property the state will also change their maps although I've heard they're several years behind so. John? Do I understand you to say that if a, if a owner has a parcel mm -hmm. of land and he wants to know where the wet wetland line is for the building or something, that the planning department will come out there and do it for him? If there's a project and they know where they want to put it, we're not going to go, we don't have the time or the staff to go tromp around, you know, acres and acres of property, but if they want to, you know, say build a house or a garage in a particular yeah. spot, um, we will do that. But in the town of Brussels, it would depend. Uh, it's got to be, it's got to be Brussels. something in county zoning, but yeah, <laughs> I was making an assumption, but yeah. <laughs> but so yeah, if you, if you need to apply to us for something, whether it's a land division or a regular zoning permit or a comprehensive zoning permit, we'll go out and do a field inspection and mark the boundaries for the area that affects your property. We're not going to do that. No. It's, it's considered part of the application fee so then process. If, if they, the, the landowner says, I want to put a house here, you go out and say, no, it's too close, <coughs> or you're too close to the wetland, then you will come along and tell them you put it over here and it's okay? Correct. Get up and go. If everything else is in <laughs> compliance, Thank yes. You. <laughs> I feel like I walked into a trap. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> On record. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody else? <coughs> If not, all in favor of the report? Aye. 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 Opposed? Oh. <laughs> Ordinance 201901, amendments to Shoreline Comprehensive Zoning Maps. Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion to accept the amendatory zoning ordinance 2019-01 amendment to the Door County Shoreland and Comprehensive Zoning Maps. Second. Any discussion or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Got to have a Vote. Yeah. Yeah. Got to have a vote. Oh, or got to have a I'm vote. Sorry. 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 Uh, <laughs> she may have been slow the last time. <laughs> it's on top of the system. I'm catching up. That time it did. That has passed in a vote of 19 yes, one no, and one absent. Report amendments to the land division ordinance. Huh? Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to accept the report to the Door County Board of Supervisors on Door County Land Division Ordinance Amendment Petition. Second. And it's all there in the explanation. I'm sure we all read it. If you need any explanation, Mariah is here yet, I think. <coughs> yes. Enjoying this, aren't you, Sue? <laughs> Would anybody like an explanation? I, I have a question. Sure. I don't know if that one, if you want to wait. Um, for Mariah. 
on page 33, Mariah, uh, 1.08 applicability, paragraph uh, parent one. Okay, four or fewer parcels that are less than 10 acres, less than 10 acres or whatever. 10 acres each? Correct. Or 10 acres of the whole? 10 acres each. 10 acres each parcel within that subdivision. Okay. Um, I just didn't think that was clear there, so. And then on page 39. Wait, we're on the, are you on the ordinance or the report? Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in the ordinance. Okay, let's wait till we go to the ordinance. Okay, that was, yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions about the report? Not all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Carried. Okay, ordinance 2019-02, amendments to land division ordinance. I'll make a motion to accept ordinance or adopt ordinance number 2019-02. Second. Go ahead, Linda. All right, so thank you for the answer on the first question. On page um, 39, review and decision of a um, either a minor condominium flat or a conservation subdivision, whatever. Um, is the, does a sign off, is the sign off still required by a municipality or is that like CSMs and everything, we used to sign off? On it them. depends on whether or not you have an ordinance and what your ordinance says. And I don't think Sebastopol we don't has have one. A ordinance. Yeah. And then is that subject to any public hearing or whatever. No, um, the re if there's a major site condominium plat or a major regular subdivision plat, those go to the resource planning committee, but it's not a public hearing. Mm -hmm. um, if there is something that's being dedicated to the public, like either parkland or a road or something like that, then the town sometimes needs to sign off a on those, but I don't think that those are subject to a public hearing either. I'm just trying to think of ways to keep the public aware of what is happening in their neighborhood and public hearings accomplish that and RPC hearings accomplish right. that. Right. I mean, the, the problem would be, well, first of all, it would add considerable length and expense to the process if you were going to do a public hearing. And then also, what would the research, I mean, if the, if the land division complies with all of the standards of the zoning ordinance and the land division, it gives people, I think, false hope that they might be able to prevent something or change something if you held a public hearing. Okay. Thank you. David? No. No. Good. Anybody else? That will go to the voter board. That is vote, passed on a vote of 19 yes, one no, and one absent. <clears throat> Report amendments to the Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. Mr. Fisher. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll make a motion. We accept the report to the Door County Board of Supervisors uh, for text amendments to Door County Cons Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. Uh, the Resource Planning Committee petitions to amend the Door County Conference Resorting Ordinance with regard to three sets of regulations. They're on the next paragraph and a half. If anybody has uh, questions, Mariah is here. Second. Questions? Not a vote to accept the report. All aye, in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Ordinance 2019-03, Amendments to Comprehensive Zoning Ordinance. I'll make a motion to uh, adopt Amendatory Zoning Ordinance 2019-03. Second. Questions? Not with Linda? Does this in any way affect anything um, in either managed forest or forest crop programs? Well, it doesn't affect the, their enrollment in the state program or whatever requirements they have to comply with for those programs. Um, but those types of properties might be something that eventually people would be able to clear, I guess, under, under this amendment. 
essentially the the woodland cutting regulations that we have are extremely convoluted and we've been trying to make them clearer and more logical the last couple of years and i think we gave some examples in the report about why the current definition of tree or of woodlands needs to exclude tree plantations because it's just it's precluding things from happening that it, it just doesn't make any sense to keep um, administering that type of of property in that way. So for the the example that you're asking about, if I had property that was in the managed forest law program um, and my managed forest law plan called for me to eventually clear cut all of that property and I was part of the area of the county that was considered woodland that needed to be protected, it would not be an option for me to completely clear it and then not replant. So, and not everybody wants to, to replant. I think we gave better examples in the in the report text on page 54. We've got one situation right now where there's an orchard next to um, trees, which are the orchard is becoming diseased from the non-orchard trees that are next to it. But mm. those trees next to it are part of an area that they can't cut, mm. um, and it's it's um, a part of a tree plantation. So. There's not. Um, it doesn't, doesn't apply to anything new. The, the woodland cutting regulations that we have in place only apply to what was in place and considered woodland in 1995. Anybody else? If not, we'll go to the voter board. Pass on a vote of 19 yes, hmm. one no, and one absent. Thank you. We completed special reports, new business. Reviewing response if any city of Sturgeon Bay's application for submerged land lease for relocation of the green elevator per section 30.11 sub 5 Wisconsin statutes. I would point out to you that this is no different than any other notice we get when there's a land trust purchase or something else that occurs, then the DNR has to notify us. This is a way of public comment to interested parties. My personal opinion would be that I would make a motion that says we have reviewed it and we have no response. If you're making that motion, Mr. Chairman, which motion. you can do from the bench, yep. uh, I would second it. Okay. Any discussion? Just a clarification. This is basically putting it back in the same lot area it was before, right, from what I can tell? Yes. Mm -hmm. I like it. Okay. <laughs> okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Or committee reports? John. Uh, the highway committee has not set their date yet for doing our road inspection, but if anybody in their district has got a road that, that really got tore up this winter with our weather, please tell the commissioner or a highway committee member and, and we will review that, that road on our inspection. Do you know approximately when you're going to be doing the we got a meeting in Monday coming of, of, of <clears throat> next month, and we'll probably set it then. But we haven't got it yeah. set yet. We wanted to make sure. So it's at least a month out. Yeah. Okay. Review committee minutes. Review of vouchers, claims, and bills. Next regular county board meeting is April 16th at 9 a.m. <laughs> okay. Uh, two other quick announcements. Uh, the first one, just going back really quick to this whole transportation thing, I talked with Joel, and just based off the comments and just kind of reading your, your faces, that we're going to, we can time this out. We'll, we'll build in a little more time. So I guess what we'd like you to do is think about the presentations. What we will do is we will have this back on the agenda for April, and we're going to ask you for a preferred direction to go. So we'll wait for your, I guess, your guidance until next month. So. What we'll end up doing is we're going to ask for your guidance on the 16th. Once we have your guidance, we will then put together a formal plan that matches that guidance. In other words, we have to actually frame it out of how we're going to fund it and how we'd actually publish it as far as our meeting notice. We bring that back in May for your, I guess, approval, and then we go for what's called a required public hearing with a decision in June. And that'd give us time to, I guess, get the RFP out in July with acceptance in August. It's going to be tight, but that's the timeline that will go. So I just want to give feedback 
I think there's a lot to absorb and you guys might have more questions. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to contact me or Joe and we'll help <coughs> the best way we can for that. Uh, the second item is that obviously our next meeting is on April 16th. Uh, with that being early, we're looking at the following Tuesday, which would be our regular meeting date. That'd be April 23rd of doing our county board retreat. And we'd be looking at that. What we did last time, I think we had that blocked out from 8 in the morning until 1 p.m. Where are we retreating to? <laughs> you have to be determined. <laughs> Your halls, <house>, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> Don't forget snacks. That is a good yeah. Yeah. Yet. Why not? Don't say Beer refrigerator. Even Meeting. better. Meeting for DM code is 326. Joel. Uh, has there been any talk yet on uh, WC or the EDC luncheon that's in April? That's the 24th, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It is. We already, didn't we get? Mm -hmm. I don't remember ever that titles? being brought up, was it? Oh, we need that might have been the one you missed. Okay. Okay. It was, I think you missed it. I think that was the one you missed. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Then my apologies. So we need, I'm sorry, we need to finalize it with Jill, who's okay. going. Okay. Just, just asking, because I obviously missed it, but I will not be going. So. On the county so how do you want to yeah, right. plan to go? Yeah, I Does everybody know today if they're going to attend or not? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. the I will. Okay. How about Which event is that? How about who's, who's not attending? The lunch, the DCEDC the luncheon, DCECD luncheon on the twenty fourth. Not who's, who's not, not attending. attending. Not attending. Not attending. Not attending. I can't make it. Yeah. Put your hands up high. Hang on, John Cook, John <laughs> Nina. Four. I got four people. I, I think John Cook's not going. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, okay. no further business to be transacted. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. Thank you, everyone.